For many years, cannabis was illegal in Canada. But recently, with its new legalization, that brings to question whether or not it is actually something dangerous. The problem is, seeing as though its legality varies across the world, with it being illegal in several states, and with it having been illegal in Canada for quite some time, answers to our questions on how exactly it affects people haven't been solidified. In fact, most people that used cannabis in the long term wouldn't admit it in studies because of its illegality and for fear of being caught. But now that it is legal, there's lots of questions that need to be answered. First off, is it dangerous? Just because something is legal, does that make it safe? Well, we know with things like nicotine and alcohol that this isn't exactly the case. But how exactly does cannabis affect our brains? What are the ingredients in cannabis that have its effects? Why does cannabis cause people to feel high? So as you may have figured out by now, the topic of this video is cannabis and specifically how cannabis affects the brain. Cannabis has two main components, the first one being CBD or cannabidiol, which is a hydrocarbon that has the exact same molecular formula as the second one, THC, or tetrahydrocannabinol. Structurally, CBD has a hydroxyl, whereas THC has an oxygen, creating a closed loop versus the open loop that we see in CBD. CBD has the effect of decreasing anxiety, making it a viable anxiolytic. THC, on the other hand, is very similar to a molecule known as anandamide, which is an endocannabinoid released when we run, creating the runner's high. These molecules bind to the CB1 and CB2 cannabinoid receptors, which are found in the endocannabinoid system in our body, and so we have these receptors throughout our body in different locations like the central nervous system, the immune system, the metabolic system, our muscular system, our gastrointestinal system, and our skeletal system as well. Additionally, they regulate hormones, and so this widespread endocannabinoid system is responsible for the widespread effects of cannabis. Looking just at how THC affects the brain, we know that there are cannabinoid receptors in the basal ganglia, which is responsible for planning movement, so we have decreased reaction time. The nucleus accumbens, which is motivational, which leads to euphoria when on the drug. The neocortex, which is important for complex thinking, and so this is why we have altered thought. There are also receptors in the cerebellum, which is important for coordination, and in the brainstem, which leads to the anti-nausea effects of THC. Receptors in the spinal cord alter our perception of pain. Ultimately, the amygdala receptors are what cause fear and paranoia. Ultimately, the two different cannabinoid receptors are both G-protein coupled receptors that cause signaling cascades. They vary in their location, however, with the CB1 being in the central nervous system and the CB2 in the immune system. Both are retrograde receptors, and so that means that instead of having the typical presynaptic to postsynaptic signal delivery in anterograde, there is a retrograde signaling from postsynaptic to presynaptic cell. So if we zoom in on the synapse, we see that the receptors are on the presynaptic side and the signaling neurotransmitters come from the postsynaptic side, playing an important monitoring role. This is especially important for preventing excitotoxicity. So basically what that is is when a neuron is communicating and sending a bunch of action potentials, all the depolarization can lead to cell death. The postsynaptic neuron now can say, okay, I got the message, chill out, and lead to a refractory period preventing the cell death. Now THC actually stops the refractory period, so instead of getting a break, the neurons keep firing, which causes people who are high to overfixate on things. This is supported by the fact that the deletion of these CB1 receptors in animal models causes animals to have seizures and memory loss. Additionally, epileptics 
are shown to have less CB1 receptors, which lowers their seizure threshold. On top of that, there are neuroprotective properties modulating calcium release and also preventing reactive oxygen species from causing cell death. In fact, looking back at our animal models with deleted CB1 receptors, we saw depression, anxiety, and cortical thinning through a decrease in dendritic density. This is especially important when considering the use of cannabis by young people who still have developing prefrontal cortices because cannabis is shown to cause decrease in dendritic density in the dorsolateral prefrontal cortex. The CBD in cannabis is actually non-addictive due to the fact that it's non-hedonic. It prevents excitotoxicity by decreasing glutamate and increasing GABA, and it also modulates reactive oxygen species. Interestingly enough, when given to animals who were addicted to heroin, CBD was shown to decrease the addictive behaviors, causing them to decrease their lever pressing for heroin over time after the application of CBD. Learning is also seen to be improved by CBD in Alzheimer disease models. On the other hand, like we mentioned before, THC is hedonic. It causes dopamine release in the ventral tegmental area, leading to a good feeling. THC is the psychoactive ingredient in cannabis, and when administered to animals, it causes them to decrease their social preference decrease their sucrose preference, meaning they like water just as much as sugar water, and also causes them to decrease their spatial working memory. Because of its psychoactive effects, some controversial studies show that it can induce psychosis and cause schizophrenia, but there are confounding variables like genetics and polydrug use. But what happens with consumption of cannabis, which contains both THC and CBD? Interestingly, when the chemical compounds get to the brain, they both bind to the same receptors. HC will directly bind, causing the feeling of the high, whereas CBD allosterically binds and blocks this feeling. Ultimately, CBD will reduce anxiety and psychosis. THC, on the other hand, increases psychotic symptoms. So ultimately, the effect depends on the percentage of each compound because CBD is an allosteric inhibitor. In the end, this highlights the fact that while CBD and THC have the same molecular formula, the tiniest difference in their structures causes them to have completely different effects. At the end of the day, there are the two main components of cannabis that cause its psychological effect the THC and the CBD, two molecules that have the same chemical formula but vary just slightly in structure that have almost opposite effects. With all that being said, the most important message I can get across to you is even though cannabis is legal, take a moment to think about its effects, take a moment to think about your reason for use. Even though something is legal, it's important you still monitor your use. We've seen the effects of alcohol, we've seen the effects of nicotine, and cannabis is quite new in its legality, meaning we still don't know much about the effects it has in the long term. So before you decide that something's safe just because it's legal, take a moment and think what its effects might be on your life. Thanks for watching. Make sure you like comment and subscribe to keep increasing your neuropsych you. That's all for today. Make sure you like, comment, subscribe, and share this video with all your friends. Also comment down below what your thoughts are on cannabis use and its legality. Remember, by watching our videos, you keep increasing that neuropsych you of yours. See you next week.